Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations and when I'm not in the workshop woodworking you can generally find me building some Lego. So today I'm going to show you how I build these display cases with recessed lighting. Let's get into the build. You've seen it, today we are building six boxes. I've taken the time off camera to go through my two pieces of birch plywood and mark out with blue tape what I need to get out of each piece. And the trick to this project is you want to set your table saw once, cut everything to that dimension, and then move your table saw and keep cutting. That makes sure that every piece comes out the same and it's nice and quick and easy. So let's get cutting. Taking the time before starting to label my pieces made for a successful project. As simple as this project is, a simple mistake can be made without realizing and I didn't want that expensive plywood to go to waste. Like I said in my intro, the trick was to set the table saw and cut all the pieces at once. The other thing you want to think about is the order of operation. I started by breaking down and rough cutting the pieces of plywood starting with the top and bottom of the box. I could then start to work on cutting the angles. I used a mix of the table saw and miter saw for this task. My new workbench with the miter saw station paid for itself on this project, allowing me to work quickly and have all the pieces come out the same size with no worries at all. I cut the 45 degree angles using the table saw. I really took my time to ensure each new cut was right and set up correctly before making the cut. I would also keep referring back to my SketchUp model to make sure I was getting it right. While we're talking about measurements, let me run over the measurements of the box. The box is 640mm wide by 296mm high by 343mm deep. When deciding on the measurements, there was a couple of things I took into consideration. What was the size of my largest Lego car? What space did I have for the boxes to go in? And what size box could I get from the sheets of plywood without too much wastage? Once I had all the pieces for the top, bottom and sides cut to width, I could turn my attention to the front edge detail. I just want to add in here something real quick. A tip that I picked up ages ago is to take a test piece of material through the project with you. That means that anytime I need to set a cut up, I make sure that I do it on this test piece first, make sure I've got everything just right, and then I can go ahead and do it on the real thing. I wanted to soften the front edges a little and draw the eye into the box, so I cut a 20 degree bevel on all the front edges. To do this, I set the table saw to 70 degrees. plywood is all broken down and it is basically at its ending dimensions. The only thing I need to do is cut its final depth, which I'll do right at the end. We are now up to the part where I need to cut a 6mm groove in for the back for the piece of plywood, which will allow me to slide it in and out if I need to get the logo out at any point. And I also need to cut a 3mm groove in the front for the perspex. So I'm going to set up the table saw, get it back to 90 degrees and get those cut. I'm using 3mm perspex for the front of the box. I went with perspex because I can cut it myself and it's cheaper than glass. 3mm also works perfectly as my saw blade is 3mm thick, so with just one pass on the table saw, the groove is cut. I set the table saw to about half the thickness of the plywood. The groove for the perspex sits 10mm back from the bevel and is cut on all pieces of the box. When it comes to the back panel, I went with 6mm plywood. Again, I set the table saw once, made the first pass, and then moved the table saw over a little and made a second pass until I had a 6mm groove. This was also sent 10mm from the back of the box. I cut the groove on all pieces of the box besides one side piece for each box. This side piece will be cut shorter than the others so I can slide the plywood in and out. I should also add here my thought behind the box. I wanted my Lego cars to look like they were in showrooms, so I wanted them to be completely enclosed, but I also needed to be able to slide the back panel out in the event that I ever needed to get to them. Once I had all the grooves cut, I could simply raise the blade and cut the fourth side of the box to its final depth. With all the pieces of the box cut to final measurement, I could turn my attention to the 6mm plywood and cut the back pieces to size. The last piece of the puzzle is the perspex. The perspex is cut to the same size as the back panel. The other great advantage to using perspex is you can cut it on the table saw using any regular woodworking blade. I will also note if you have a saw stop, you don't need to override the brake cartridge here. You just don't want to make the cut too quickly. Nice and slow works best. You also want to keep the brown paper coating on the perspex for as long as possible to avoid it being damaged throughout the build process. To help the Lego cars look like they are in showrooms, I painted the inside of the boxes white. I won't bore you with the footage. The last step before glue up is to start the install of the lights. 
We are up to the point where we are going to install some cabinet lighting and I have gone with these ones from Ikea. I will leave a link in the description below for the ones that I have used. And I've used these for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't need to be an electrician to install these. And number two, you can plug up to six lights in the one power pack. Then you've only got one cable running from the boxes to the walls, so everything is neat and tidy. When it comes to installation, you've got a couple of options. You can just simply double-sided tape, stick them to the plywood and away you go. I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna countersink mine down through the plywood and then I'm gonna route a groove out the back for the cable. So I've done this on my test piece to make sure that I've got everything right. So now we can go ahead and do it on the real thing. I first measured and marked the center of the top panel of the box. I used a 60 mm Forster bit to drill down just enough for the light to be flush. Now ideally, you would use a drill press with this size Forstner bit, however my drill press was too small so I had to use a hand drill. I just made sure I went nice and slow and tried to keep the drill as straight as possible. I could then clamp a straight edge to the board and I could run my router along to create a groove in the back for the wires. I used a straight bit to make the cut and completed it in three passes. It was then time to see if all of my work I had done up until this point was correct and start to glue up all the boxes. For the glue up, I went with the blue tape method and then finished it with a band clamp to help bring everything in square. The perspex also needs to be added into the glue up. I had to peel back some of the protective paper on the perspex as it would be impossible to remove later. You just want to take your time to ensure your grooves are matched and in the right spot. The glue up was a little stressful just trying to bring all of the pieces together and trying not to scratch the perspex, but I managed to get it done. I also added blue tape to the inside of the joints to help with squeeze out. However, I just found at times the tape got stuck in the joint and it was hard to remove later on. I think just taking the time to wipe away the glue squeeze out as it happens is a better solution. It was satisfying to see everything line up perfectly and there was very little gaps to fill later on. I will also add a little tip here for you. If you find after the glue up you have a little gap in your miters, you can grab a screwdriver and rub it over the joint. It will close most of the gap. As I'm using miters, I needed to reinforce the joint. I could have used splines, but I decided to go with dowels as most of them won't be seen. I used a 3 8 Forstner bit to drill down through the top and bottom pieces and into the side pieces. Another couple of tips for you. I lay down blue tape where I will be drilling. This means I can make my markings on the blue tape and not on the plywood and it also helps with tear out. I also start with the Forster bit and then finish the hole with a regular drill bit. This just speeds up the process. I unfortunately didn't realise the camera wasn't filming for the part where I glue in the dowels and use a flush trim saw to flush cut the dowel, but let's be honest, that's the easy bit. The last job on the boxes before finishing was sanding. I settled into a podcast and sanded up to 220 grit. When I test fitted the back 6mm plywood, I found it was hard to slide in and out, so I added a couple of handles to the back to help insert the panel into place. I used some cutoffs of plywood and cut a 20 degree angle on each side of the plywood and then cut them to length using the miter saw. I used super glue to glue them into place so they were quick drying and I could start to apply finish to all the pieces. I applied three coats of poly sanding with 220 grit in between coats. To install the lights I used hot glue. This will keep them into place and if I ever need to go and replace the lights later on they will be easy to remove. The other great thing about the IKEA lights is they came with these white strips to help hide the cables. So I hot glued these over the routed groove which finished the install off cleanly. It was then time to bring the boxes to life and put the cars in their showroom. I will also add here I made a quick box thing to raise the bottom of the box off the ground which I think made the whole project look better and finished. Now guys I do hope you have liked this project and if you have help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.